Hi everyone, I'm Microbyte. I'm creator of the Ionic Maker watch face creator for the Fitbit Ionic and today I wanted to take you through some of the settings and take you through some of the options and explain how to use them and how to get started with it. So first things first, um, download the Ionic Maker watch face generator from the Fitbit gallery. Once you're there and it's downloaded, you should see the menu look similar to this. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and go into settings. Um, if you notice the default watch face that comes with it is this just plain white with black text. Um, did that to try to keep it so that you could just jump right in and start adding and changing things without having to get rid of a bunch of stuff already there. So again, first thing we're going to jump into is once you load this, um, you're going to see a number of things for loading and, and saving your watch faces. Um, I do allow you to save up to nine different created faces. So each one of these can be named and then that way you can go through and know what's empty, what's not, and then load and save it at your will. Um, <clears throat> so to take you through this, so to save or load something, so what you'll do is you'll go and select the slot you want. So if, if you're loading something, you'll obviously want to pick one that has something that you've already named. If you're saving, try to pick an empty one unless you overlay it, so kind of be careful with that. So in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and show you a load. So um, I've got this one called Doc on slot 2. So what I'll do is I'll select slot 2 and go ahead and press the load button. And if you notice, it, the watch will tell you that it's loaded and your face should appear. Same thing as if um, you were going to save. You'll want to go ahead and select the slot you want to do. So let's say I want to save to slot 2 seven on this one. I want to name it something else, so we'll name it Bob, whatever. So once you do that, then um, go ahead and press the save clock. It'll tell you that it saved to slot seven, and now if you notice, Bob is now saved there. So we can load it and save it um, as we want. Um, next thing are some general settings. So first thing to start off with is screen always on. And what this does is it keeps the screen on. So I use this a lot when I'm creating a watch face. Instead of having to tap the buttons or get back into it, I just keep it on and the screen will stay on. Um, do note that it does suck up your battery life really quickly. So when you're done um, with it on like that, go ahead and turn it off for normal usage or else it will stay on and your battery will be depleted pretty quickly. Um, let's go back to the default face. So I actually saved it to, to slot three. So let's go ahead and load that back up so we can go through some examples here. So again, that's the default face you'll normally see. So taking you through some of the options, um, border is just a border around the screen. So I try to include some things that you might want to do to spruce up your watch. Um, so you can play around with those. Um, time options or font options. Um, these are all font options available to all Fitbit developers. So everything here is things that we have access to. So I included all of them. Now there's two categories. One is for time and one is for other. Time is anything that's directly related to time. So you've got two versions of time. You've got this hold time here, and then you've got what I call split time. And that's where you'll see hours separated and minutes separated. So you can kind of stagger them or stack them on top of each other. So if you go through, you can change the time font and that'll be reflected there. So you should be able to pick one that meets your style. For the other text fonts, that's anything that's, um, anything that's say steps, calories, battery, anything that's not time related. So those will fall into that category. I couldn't assign a font for every single item that would have taken up some pretty valuable resources and as it is, I've already pushed the code limit on this, so it's pretty, I don't have very many options to put too much into it, so I had to make some compromises here and there. Background, I try to come up with some that might be um, ones that you might want to use. So these are predefined ones, so you can go through and assign one you might like, like hearts or something, or whatever might work for you. Um, the background color, this does affect any of the backgrounds you have. So if you don't have an actual background image selected, it'll just show up in that color. So try to include a number of color options that might appeal to everyone. So it's similar to the color options I have on my other faces. Um, 
background images. So this was one of the harder things to implement and one of the touchier things. So there's a couple rules to this, um, and I try to outline them here. They have to be in JPEG format, and that's that .jpg JPG format. They have to be non-progressive. So usually if you use like Paint Shop or um, Photoshop or some paint program, as you're saving it, there might be an option to save it as a non-progressive or progressive. Make sure it's a non-progressive JPEG. I'll have a tutorial up on how to do online conversions. There's a site I use that has it set as a default to do non-progressive. So um, I'll, I'll post that up on my site later on and link it to the video here. Um, the other part is it has to be a small image. Larger, if you're trying to load a 4K to this tiny thing, you're going to blow it up. So I had to constrain what can actually be viewed to something to close to a 348 by 250 resolution. It's the native resolution of the watch. So anything about 100 kilobits or less will work fine. Um, the other thing is, again, that's the standard resolution, the 348 by 250 of the Ionic. So if you get something that's typically widescreen or matches the the orientation of the Ionic, it'll work fine. A lot of times I'll open Photoshop or um, Paint Package I've used and crop it to that resolution and then save it as a non-progressive um, JPEG and I upload my stuff to image I am imgur imager.com it has everything I need so I can drop it into an album and save it there so I recommend that if you want to save your stuff then you can get the actual link to the actual image plug that in and and download it there um, again I'll have some tutorials up on that on my site at some point um, so for each of these options next are time and and date options um, the time option is the combined time. So if you're going through here, that's this that you see on screen right now. So this affects anything where you have hours and minutes put together. So I do again offer that option for split time, but some of the options here are pretty standard across labels and that. So of course you've got your positions up, down, left, right. You can increase, decrease font size to whatever size you want. Um, this text alignment really means where in relation to the screen or to where the text is positioned you want it to line up so if you say something like the default center what it's going to do is it's going to expand the image left or the the text left and right as it grows or shrinks um, if you left justify things it'll be left justify with the one so if your numbers change where let's say you go from 10 to a one then you don't have a zero everything will still be lined up with this one right here and then right justified everything would line up with the five so if you can imagine an, an invisible line there it will never exceed past the right side so usually what i do is if anything's right justified on the screen i'll right justify it if i want to line something up with the left it'll be left and then center will be center so kind of play around with those options um jumping down um, let me hide this oh and by default most of my stuff on the screen is hidden I do that so that way you can come in without, again, having a bunch of stuff to have to clear off. But to show you what the split hours and minutes are, that's really where if you've seen some of the watches with the hours and minutes stacked, you have that option here. Oops, that's seconds, sorry. You'll have that option here. So if I unhide that, then you can position it there so you can stack your minutes and seconds, or minutes and hours. Then there's seconds and dates. So seconds works the same way as the others. And then date, you've got a number of different options. I had to do some compromises here again, and I tried to account for or accommodate for most of the date styles that people would use. So there's some that are, um, let me unhide that so I can show you, sorry. So there's some that are worded out so you can see that um, we've got some here get that down sorry and then we've got some here so we've got the the wording spelled out I give the short representation of day and month and then even shorter there so play with the options I try to again include stuff for everyone to use um, depending on what format you wanted next thing are the activities I had to compromise and take a vote on which one was the least popular and floors was by far the one that nobody seems to want to use or cares about. I had to do this as a compromise again because of the size of this app and some of the limitations with the watch. So I, I've included everything for battery, active minutes, all the rest. Um, 
And within each of these, they all work the same way. So you, you unhide the steps or whatever. And then um, the only difference here is this label element that I've added. And the label or the text label is something that you can add. So let's say you wanted to put something like steps and then you put it in. So you'll notice there it now has a steps label on it. Um, to adjust it, because right now it's off to the left side of the actual value, you have the option to put it on the left or right side. So if I drop that to the right, you'll notice now that it should appear to the right. Um, so it's the number and then steps. That applies the same way to the rest of them. So again, all the same other options. You can justify your stuff. So if I wanted it to be right justified on the screen, I would right justify it or center it or whatever. So those all apply. Same thing for the color options. Change those to your liking. Icons. Icons. Think of those as just small images. So you can add a number of the ones that are fit but defaults. Um, so there's one for active minutes, you've got steps, you've got other things, but I also do include some that are extra, so you can use them to embellish your screens, or what I use in some cases, like um, squares and circles and that, you can actually use those to sort of create um, a little box to put your text into, or there's even um, some for circles, so you can do that with circles there. Also included a line one, so if you can think about that, um, you can use a line one to create dividers, if you will. So in this case, I've got one there that's a line, so I, I do use those in some of my examples. Um, so you can actually put a line to separate horizontal or even vertical. So maybe you want some separation between hours and that, well, you can use that there. Um, so they all apply. I give you at least I give you five options or five icons that you can use. Um, so hopefully that's enough. I am share codes. This is a way to actually share your creations with others. So anything you create in here, you can generate a share code for. So it it dumps out the the code to actually build your watch face. So you can generate it, select all, copy it. And what I usually what I like to do also is back these up. So if, got, if I've got a face that I really like and I don't want to lose it for, let's say, technical reasons or something, I'll bring up the Notes app on my iPhone, paste it in there, and that way I've got it saved. So um, that way I always have a backup of it. But let's say I wanted to load one, maybe one that existed that I've backed up because I, I do only have nine slots, and if some of you go a little crazy, you could fill those up pretty easily. So... Um, I can grab one that I've backed up, copy it. So if I go back to my face here, let's clear this out. So you would come in here to load one with your saved code, paste it in, and then go ahead and read it. And as you read it, if you notice, it starts to vibrate. And that's my feedback. I, I coded it to, to give you feedback to know that it was actually working. Um, it's a little hard to get the communication right between the um, settings app and the actual face itself so when it stops vibrating your face is done so in this case i've loaded back my um my doc watch face here um, from that share code that i had there so limitation to keep in mind is custom background images don't go and get part of the share code so if you are sharing these you'll need to um you'll need to give that person the link to your actual image for them to have it, but it does generate the rest of the text in that. So, um, so that share codes again, I use that a lot for backing up my faces. Something to do. So, just in case, um, presets. I do have a couple presets that I built in, so that way anybody can come in and get started. Or if you like one of the presets, you can have it always available. So, select the one you want and just load it. Again, you should feel the watch start to vibrate and notice the screen start to build out that face based off the preset. Um, last thing is the reset. The reset does not does not wipe out your existing um, save slot, so don't worry about that. The reset's there in case, let's say you've built this, this nice face and you wanna just go ahead and start from a clean um, palette. So instead of having to remove and tweak everything, if you just push the reset, what it'll do is it'll go back to that standard black text with white background. 
and that way you can just get started on your next face and, and start from that point so we'll let that finish and finally um, if you have any questions problems issues anything um, visit my site you can also see my other watch faces that I've created over time and apps and just give me some feedback so good bad whatever um, I do this for for fun it's a hobby I don't ask for anything but I do love seeing what you guys create and love seeing people use my stuff so that's really all I ask for um, again if anybody has any questions whatever just feel free to contact me and I really hope you enjoy this and take a chance to actually use it um, build something that you want and enjoy yourself so thanks for watching and look forward to seeing what you guys can create.